I made art. Literally. Hello everyone and happy Halloween season of 2024. Today we're going to be making our very own Art the Clown Halloween prop and we're gonna be doing it on a budget, especially since I saw places like Barty City are charging $250 for their version of the animatronic. I'm not a fan. Honestly, for that price point, it doesn't look realistic enough for me. So that's why I'm making this video so I could share with you how I made this prop step by step and of course I will list all the materials that I use in the description of the video itself. Step one to make your life easier, I highly recommend finding a used mannequin. I lucked out because I found this one on Facebook Marketplace from a local retail chain that was going out of business. I picked this guy up for 50 bucks and I love him because the arms are even magnetic, it makes it super easy, and he came with his own stand. So first, I recommend check out Facebook Marketplace since you could actually pick up your mannequin in person and save on shipping. Otherwise, check out Amazon. They have some new and used mannequins which are priced pretty cheap, and also eBay has some cheap ones as well. Real quick, if you're a fan of DIYs on a budget, please consider subscribing since I make videos on that and also all things interesting and horrific. But without further ado, I'm gonna get into the good stuff now. Throughout the video so far, I've been going in with a really light layer of air dry clay so I can gradually build up his features and I'm not worried about perfection since I'm going to be going in at the end of the video with parts of a mask. Really, this is just to provide dimension and add things like eyes and teeth to make him look more realistic behind those parts I'm going to use later on. Do, do, do. Art doesn't have fingers on his little gloves, so I was like, we gotta, we gotta get that detail right. We can't have that looking wonky. Perfection is not what we're going for because he's like a hot mess, but in a good way, you know? And then my thought is, since it's really gonna only be like the, the fingertips exposed, I'm gonna paint them this color that I have from my root scene mannequin, it came with it. Yeah, so we'll just paint the fingertips. Do I think this is expired? Probably, it's a little separated, but you know what, we're gonna make it work. Because that's what we do up in here. I'm really big on improvising. I'm not one of those people who's like, oh my God, I need to buy the exact this and this to make it work. No, figure it out. You know, keep it cheap, ideally, if you can. People just waste so much stupid money. I'm like, I'm not trying to do that. I ended up going in twice with paint just to make sure there was a nice, real even base layer. And this is one of those little details you want to do since I knew if you could see right from the distance that he had two different colored hands, he wasn't going to look realistic. So that's why I'm going in to do this. I let the clay dry overnight for 24 hours, and the next morning I went in with sandpaper to smooth it all out, and also applied a really thin layer of paint, just so this way, if you could see the parts of the skin that were going to stick out, it was going to have a little bit of a gloss to it, and it wouldn't look so matte and dull. And now here, I'm going in with just a Sharpie to actually color and add the black to his lips and also his eyes. But this is where I'm gonna share a disclaimer. The mouth was driving me nuts being open like this. I absolutely love the fake teeth that I added. They're acrylic, but I didn't like how the mouth was just hanging open. So I actually just went in with my fingers and used an X-Acto knife and cut the bottom lip off and then hot glued it up slightly higher and did the same for the teeth too. And it was nice since the lip itself was still curing, it wasn't fully hardened yet. So I was able to make this adjustment pretty easily. If you're a big prop person and you wanna make your own DIYs, I can't recommend the acrylic teeth that I used enough since it's something so simple, but it really adds that next level of realism to it. So I'll make sure to link those below. And best part, they're super affordable, under $10 for two sets. Now for a few areas, I did get this mask just so this way I could utilize some of the detail work like with the top of the head here, but this blood on the face mask is not it. So I'm gonna try to take some of this off. I'm hoping that it's not indestructible. It's indestructible. Damn, what do they use? I figured this would definitely take it off rubbing alcohol. Now we're trying acetone, let's see. Because it looks a lot like nail polish, if you ask me. Let's see. Oh, it is nail polish. This is some cheap red nail polish. Whoever did this, not exactly an artist. Looks stupid. 
making me do all this extra work. For whatever reason, the basic white mask without all this bull was gonna take like a week to deliver. Cause somebody got a little crazy with their nail polish thinking they were an artist. Well, newsflash, nobody wants your mask. Making me do all this extra shit. It was okay until they added all this shit. Even try to get off. Let it pool on there for a little bit and hopefully it doesn't just start eating the mask though. There we go, that helps. Oh abrasive side of a sponge. Eh, not much left. Believe it or not, I'm not painting my nails frequently. There's still so much left. Oh, I hate whoever did this. Man, really? That's what I said it. All right, we're gonna cut this mouth out because my mouth is way better. Of course, I'm cutting this out so this way you could see those real acrylic looking teeth behind it. And this mask was probably about $20 on Amazon. It's just too bad that there was this red coloring on it. Cause as you could tell throughout the video, it drove me nuts. It really did. That is if you couldn't already tell from my monologue of profanity. At this point, I'm putting the mask on just so this way I could see how things line up with the clay features that I made. And this is one I made in an executive decision, which in the moment I was nervous about, but it ended up working out where I actually cut out the entire face itself. I did this since no matter how much I tried to manipulate the mask and have it lay flat on his face, it wasn't fitting right. So it really was just much easier to cut the face out itself and then hot glue it to his face. Now I'm taking my time to line up those features with hot glue and really just press the mask down as firmly as possible. And then once I was happy with how the mask was lined up, I'm going back in with Sharpie just to add additional black to any areas that are sticking out where you could see the white. And then lastly, I went in with the hood that came with the mask itself and repurposed it. If I bought a cloth one, it would have looked that much better, but I just wanted to repurpose what I had. And of course, my final cherry on top was adding a little bit of perma blood to his teeth, just so this way they looked really grotesque and gory. But overall, I'm really happy with how this prop came out. I was figuring things out as I was going. I've never used air dry clay before. I have no tools to use that clay. I just use the back of paintbrushes. And in the end, I really am a fan of how it came out. And I just want to keep him out all year round, especially since I find art so funny and charming. I know he does horrible things to people, but he has that quality about him, doesn't he? But thank you so much for taking the time to watch. And if you're interested, I have a full playlist on my channel of other Halloween DIYs that I've done. And hopefully I will see you for the next DIY that I have coming. But in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful Halloween season. And thanks again for watching.